Okay, so section number seven. We're now going to do a couple of key exercises to better understand measurement system repeatability, which is consistently getting the same result with the same inspector and the same part. Let's consider the following scenario. Stroker is analyzing their weight measurement system. To test it, they provide an inspector named Robert a 5 gram sample. Robert places the 5 gram sample 10 times on the analytical weight scale. So it's the exact same sample. We expect the same result each time. The results are shown below. Is the system biased? And what is the measurement system standard deviation? So I'm going to copy my information here. We're going to paste it over into mini tab. There we go. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And now I'm simply going to ask myself, is the system biased? I'll do this as a one sample T test. So C3 and it should be about five grams based on my golden sample. So I'm going to copy my information as a picture. Let's paste this here and let's copy this one as well. And let's paste it here. You can take a moment to think about it. I'll just pause for a little bit. Okay. So based on the P value shown here, since that is above 0.05, there is no bias. Okay, so first rule completed. Now I need to determine if, even though there is no actual bias, if the system is properly repeatable or not. So for that, we're now going to calculate the standard deviation of the system. So we're going to do stat basic display. I'm going to grab my column that has my data, which in this case is C3. From here, I'm going to copy as a picture my output. So let's grab the results. There we go. And I can visualize my standard deviation. Standard deviation being 0 0.0096. Okay. Now remember, we multiplied this by three. So three sigmas. So I'm simply going to grab my handy calculator here. 0 0.0096 times three. That's going to be 0 0.0288 okay so what does that mean in real world conditions let's visualize it you don't need to do this i'm just going to do it for demonstration purposes so let's say i give carlos a part that is 10 inches long and carlos remains with the standard deviation that was calculated before if the part in real world conditions is 10 inches he might tell me that the part is 9.99 inches long, 9.98 inches long, 10.01 inches long, 10.02 inches long, 10.03 inches long. As you can see, plus minus 0 0.0288. Okay. Now, if the part is actually 10 inches long, it will be incredibly impossible for Carlos to all of a sudden tell me that it is 10.15 inches long or as small as let's say 9.85 inches long it is outside of the plus minus three sigma rule where we expect 99 percent of all data values to arrive remember this is assuming the part in real world conditions measures 10 inches if i give carlos a part that actually measures nine inches well the curve is gonna move to 9 inches being on the mean plus minus 3 sigmas. Visually, to help you guys understand it better, let's do something like this. Oh, apologies, I deleted my calculation 0 0.0096. There we go. Okay. Each curve right here represents a different sample. If I give Carlos a part that measures 5 inches, this is the overall width or uncertainty which, which he will report the result. If the part is actually 6 inches long, this is the overall width of the uncertainty of how long the part actually is. And if I give him a part that is 8 inches long, this is the overall width or uncertainty of how big the part is. Okay. The topic should start to make a little bit more sense for people unfamiliar with statistics, 
But if not, please don't worry, we'll do additional exercises as we go along. Here on the answer section, we're going to state the system is not biased. The test method standard deviation is 0 0.0096. Okay. Now, is this value big or small? Don't worry about it for now. We will cover rules for determining if repeatability is acceptable or not in a future lesson. For now, remember that the standard deviation is just one part of the calculation. If we decide to continue using this weight scale to measure a 60 gram sample, how light and how heavy might the system report the sample? We're talking about the same one that we did before. So I was using a five gram sample. If instead of being five grams long, I mean four, five grams in weight, the new sample is 60 grams in real world conditions, the measurement uncertainty is still going to be plus minus three sigmas. So in answer, it's going to be 60 grams plus minus three times 0 0.0096. Okay. Which equals 60 grams plus minus 0 0.0288 which again equals a range let's do the calculation right here minus 60 that will be 59.9712 and a maximum weight of 60 plus 0 0.0288 which we can copy and paste it there Okay, so if the sample provided to my analytical weight scale is exactly 60 grams. My system might report it as being a little bit lighter or a little bit heavier, but always within this range. Okay. Now, Stroker is testing three weight scales. A 15 gram sample has been placed on the machines 10 times. The results are summarized below. Are any of the weights scaled biased? What is the measurement standard deviation of each system? Apologies here, this is actually a typo. Should be 15 grams as stated by the problem. So we're just going to replace it there. Now, we're going to grab all our information as shown here. And we'll copy and paste it over into Minitab. You can pause the video right now if you would like to do this exercise on your own. If not, please just give me three seconds and I will provide you with the answer. Okay, so first stop is determining if any of the weight scales are biased. So I'll do a one sample t-test, C3, C4, and C5, and the expected hypothesized mean is 15. I'll execute my study, and we're simply gonna copy our information as a picture. So we'll paste this here, and we'll paste this one here there we go now i'm going to view the low level data to determine if there's any bias i can determine quickly that the first machine is not biased because its p value is above 0.05 machines two and three do have bias so yes to the bias p values below 0.05 now is it positive or negative in the event of machine EN087, which is the second machine, the bias is negative. So EN087 reports samples as being 0.05 grams lighter than they actually are. While EN088 reports samples as being about 0.02 grams heavier than they actually are. Is this a problem or not? Remember that we must do a calculation based on the tolerance that we need to measure with this machine. If the tolerance is, for example, plus minus two grams, well, there's no need to worry, right? But if the tolerance I'm trying to measure is, for example, plus minus 0 0.01 grams, then yes, both biases would be significant enough to throw off my calculations. Now, the next thing that I need to determine is how repeatable each machine is. So I'll do stat basic and then C3, C4, and C5. 
we'll copy our information as a picture and we'll paste it right here. If I look at the low level data, I'll find that the most repeatable machine is the third machine at 0 0.003 and machines one and two are at the same repeatability likewise. So 0 0.007 and 0 0.007. Slight changes in the light last two decimal positions, but the diet point, it doesn't have that many of an impact. So here we can say here on the answer section, EN086 is not biased. EN087 is biased toward reporting parts as lighter. EN088 is biased towards reporting parts heavier, the standard deviation of EN086 and EN087 is similar, while EN088 has the best repeatability of all machines. Okay. Now, if we kept using the three weight scales, how light and how heavy would they report a part that measures 80 grams? You can pause the video right now to try and do this answer on your own. If not, please just give me two seconds and I'll provide you with the answer. Okay, so we're gonna, for all of them, we're going to have 80 grams plus minus. Since all samples provided are going to be exactly 80 grams, then the variation is simply going to be caused by the machine itself. 80 grams, three times the standard deviation of EN086, which is 0.007. I'm just going to round it up. Same thing for EN088. And lastly, three times 0.003. Calculations right now are going to be 80 plus minus, and then three times 0.007. That's going to be 0.021, if I'm not mistaken. It's always nice to confirm. There we go. And this will likewise minus 80, that would be 79.979 up to 80.021. This one will be likewise similar. And the main one that's going to change is machine 088, which will have a smaller range since it is most more repeatable. So 80 plus minus 0.009. That's going to be equal to 79.991 up to 80.009. Okay. For confirmation's sake, 80 minus 0 0.009, 79.991. Okay. There we go. Exercise 14. Exercise 14 is an on your own exercise. So please try and do it on your own without any additional instructions. If you have any issues, you can always see the answer, which I will provide in a couple of seconds. Okay, so consider that Gunter is executing a measurement system analysis on a CMM machine. They are placing a 5-inch gauge block for measurement and using the same part measurement routine and inspector. The results from 10 measurements are shown below. Is the system biased? What is the overall measurement standard deviation? And based on the standard deviation, how big and how small would it report a part that measures exactly two inches? So we're gonna simply gonna grab all our information right here. Gonna paste it on a brand new worksheet. Stat basic one sample t test. C tree. The gauge block is five inches. So I'm gonna say five. I'm gonna execute. And we can review here if the system is biased or not. So let's do this. Just by looking at my p-value, I can tell that it is below 0.05. Since it is below 0.05, it means that the system is actually biased. Since the system is biased, I need to determine if it's a positive bias or a negative bias. The gauge block is 5 inches, and I'm reporting it on average as 4.94. So I'm biased to reporting parts as being smaller which would be a negative bias. The system has a negative bias and reports parts as being smaller 
than they actually are by 0 0.06 units on average okay now we need to determine how repeatable the system is even though it is biased we still need to know how consistent the results are so we're simply going to do a display option and we're going to copy the standard deviation the system repeatability is 0 0.005 for the standard deviation now from here the question is what is the overall measurement standard deviation that has been answered is the system bias that has been answered and based on the standard deviation how big and how small would it report a sample that measures two inches so for that we have the following it's going to be two inches plus minus three times the standard deviation from here we have two inches plus minus 0 0.0 15. From here, we get 1.985 up to 2.015. So sometimes this system would say that a 2 inch sample or gauge block is 1.99, for example, or 2 inches exactly, or 2.01 inches exactly. But it's never going to over report it as 3 inches or 1 inch. It's always going to be within this plus minus three sigma range so we hope that the answer is clear about how to properly calculate system repeatability in section 8 we will cover how to tell if repeatability is considered to be acceptable for our needs stay tuned